There has been a flood in Glanton City. A man has fallen into the river in Glanton City. Call for help. Hey! Build the flood ID app. Use the SOS function. Call for help. And make the rescue. Ladies and gentlemen, floods are a scourge that occur every year. In 2021, Malaysia faced record 1 in 100 years rainfall at a new high of 363 mm. This is set to increase as global warming causes rising sea levels. We as Team Flood ID are ready to help users prepare for a flood, evacuate in the worst case scenario, and mitigate loss of lives and property. However, before we begin, we needed to validate our ideas. In order to do this, we conducted a survey targeted at flood survivors. Our survey of 53 responses indicated that 66% of respondents found it difficult to contact rescue services, showing a clear disconnect from rescue services to the public. The respondents felt that their chances of surviving floods, however, increased from 37.7% of participants reporting 4 out of 5 points to 49.1% of survivors reporting 5 out of 5 points when provided information on surviving a flood. An overwhelming majority in Light Orange declared a need for an SOS system where the alerts before, during and after floods and an offline messaging system that allows communications even after internet or phone lines are down. And so we landed on a solution, an app packing warning alerts that would notify the user of imminent floods from both weather reports and user-generated data, informative news from verified sources to help predict floods, and emergency lifeline services that connect government and private rescue services with the user to create a one-stop flood disaster super app. Here's a quick demonstration courtesy of Figma. First, the user logs into or registers an account on the app. We are using our default blank password and blank username to get by in this demonstration. Other alternatives are available. On the main screen, there's a concise overview of the local weather forecast and flood status. There is information on the water levels from local flood monitoring stations as well as official government announcements. Nearby rescuers track via the Flood ID app, important alerts and news from verified sources. Users can select the More option if they require more information. Advertisements and Flood ID branded merchandise will be shown here. During a flood, tap the SOS button and request for flood rescue. That's it, the rescue boat's on the way. Or choose flood donation option to get help after a flood recedes. Here you can set the location pin for rescue, monitor 8 locations and rescuers nearby, and set the number of people who require help along with the user. Once the send button is pressed, users can see where their rescuers are, their capacity, and provide flood condition updates so rescuers can be better prepared. Rescuers can download the Flood ID app to allow users to find them easily too. On the new screen, users can get relevant flood news and life-saving survival tips for free. Advertisements will be displayed here as well. With our proprietary SOS network, Flood ID uses Wi-Fi hotspot technology and Bluetooth to communicate with nearby users without any internet connection or phone service. This technology is similar to how Apple AirTag implements tracking even without internet access. On this screen, users can receive flood alerts, rescue alerts, messages from evacuation centers and post-flood charity or commercial services. Last but not least, detailed personal information is available for evacuation centers. The current location of the user and close family members to contact in case of an emergency are readily available on the profile screen. Alternatively, you can track the last SOS location and current evacuation center to ensure they are safe and sound. Ladies and gentlemen, this app has got you covered before, during and after the flood. So, I hear you ask, what about our business model? Our app focuses on business to consumer or B2C and business to business or B2B with added potential of business to government or B2G. For the B2C end, we plan to host frequent fundraising events both online and offline to generate a stable revenue stream and to continue to build publicity for Flood ID. The publicity will be crucial for driving new consumers into the app. 
During such events, exclusive merchandise will be available, more on this later, and fun challenges such as flood preparedness quizzes and food safety speeches will be available for all. These events will challenge adults and children alike to be prepared for the dangers of flood in a fun and educative way. We also begin to produce merchandise using Flood ID, our logo and app as our brand. This adds value to existing consumers and contributes income, which allows us to continue to maintain our app while ensuring bugs are fixed, new features are added, and more people are protected from floods and can get help more easily. As the Malaysians say, we're swimming or drinking water because the merchandise increases publicity while providing a tangible service. Our merchandise includes shirts, rescue kits for flood survival, flashlights, and waterproof bags. In the future, we plan to implement non-fungible tokens or NFTs as part of our merchandise to enable Flood ID to leverage the benefits of blockchain technology. Thirdly, for added revenue, advertisements will be placed in the new slash info section, which generates ad revenue using Google AdSense up to 15,000 ringgit annually, provided a traffic of 50,000 users monthly. Local businesses can advertise with us in this section to grow their own business while users can hashtag support local and get conveniently located products for good prices. This is of course just a projection, but if an official web app is launched, we can earn a minimum of around 4,122 US dollars with roughly 50,000 users monthly just from Google AdSense. This is roughly 17,356 ringgit, which is a decent sum. For B2B on the other hand, we plan to carry out affiliate marketing with verified sellers and service providers to provide a platform for them to connect with customers as shown on the screen. We as a flood-based app company will prioritize manufacturers of flood survival equipment like life jackets and first aid kits, but other sellers are more than welcome to join us. From our side, we plan to impose a 3% commission fee for every transaction to maintain our app and continue innovating to provide both vendors and users a better experience. As you can see, this is how our vendors and rescuers alike can interact with our users using the Flood ID response portal. In the messages and alerts section, you can find the right service provider or vendor for your needs and ask if services are currently available or ask for an appointment. Altogether, implementation of B2B and B2C will allow the app to deliver maximum impact and benefits, as well as increasing our revenue to allow for continued survivability of the Flood ID app. Next, we move on to the market segment. Firstly, for geographic factors, we aim to target those in West Malaysia. This is because West Malaysia frequently experiences widespread floods that inundate large areas. Most flood-prone areas such as Kelantan and KL are located in the West, as well as their rainy climate that causes many floods. For our target demographic, we aim to supply our app to flood victims, both male and female, 18 and above, who are mature enough to use their phone for their benefits and NGOs who act as a support for finance and app innovation. Every app has its competitors and we are no different. Our competitors are Sambal SOS, My Public Info Banjir and Kita Jaga. We differ from them by providing better and active customer service to help users use the app more frequently, thus improving the mood of the users being the only app offering emergency messaging to warn users of floods, having alert notifications to help users prepare without panic, location tracking to track down both victims and aid locations, SOS requests to call for help, weather detection to detect flood-inducing weather, and information sharing for weather conditions and flood survival techniques. Now for our project roadmap. During the beta stage, we will primarily focus on working with other like-minded NGOs to integrate our app into the local humanitarian scene and also increase awareness of our app, especially on our core features such as the SOS function. On releasing the full version, we plan to scale out our app by engaging with local city councils and government welfare institutions as part of a wider B2G initiative to further increase adoption rates across the spectrum of users nationally. Eventually, we plan to expand to the wider ASEAN region, as floods are a problem shared by most countries in the region thanks to our monsoon weather. According to the UNOCHA, 9.6 million people are affected by floods in ASEAN, so our user estimates of 1% of the regional population should be achievable. Overall, we plan to maximize our social impact in the long term by building flood resilience regionally as part of SDG 13 while ensuring our operating costs are covered, albeit at the expense of lower profits. Finally, our team comprises engineering, computer science, and biotech students who are passionate about solving Malaysia's current issues. The app prototype was proudly designed by Regan and Jia Xiao. The business analysis were performed by Kevin and Faizwan, and I, Abram Cho, 
am your presenter for Team V213 of University Malaysia Sarawak. Should you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.